Okay, hello. Uh, uh, that's not the way you start a video. Let's start out with that. So we'll be taking this mass here and we'll be uh, diluting it in about 350 mils of water, of uh, distilled water. And then uh, we'll be mixing it up on the hot plate, getting it all dissolved. Next is going to be the copper carbonate, or excuse me, sodium carbonate. It should be about 48 grams, and eventually we'll dilute that in about 200 mils. solution and get started. Alright, so I had to add a little extra water. I think my I think my scale might be a little bit off, but um, there's maybe a couple of crystals left in there. I think it's going to be time for me to add the uh, uh, sodium carbonate to the solution, even though it's taking absolutely ages for that to dissolve in the water. And we'll uh, we should see the copper carbonate immediately precipitate out of solution with the evolution of CO2 uh, gas out of solution out of the top. So I can only add this a small amount at, the, at a time or else it will foam out of the uh, container. Okay, for some reason it's green. I don't know why it's green. It's like the Incredible Hulk took a dump in the water. That looks awful. Oh well, we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing. Okay, so I believe that the reaction is complete. I'm still getting a little bit of an evolution of CO2 out of liquid, so I'm gonna have to let it sit for a little while. But as you can see, the majority of the precipitate has collected at the bottom of the flask, which is ideal. Uh, I'm gonna have to keep agitating this to make sure that it is completely done reacting. Uh, but still, uh, one good practice is to make sure that whenever you do have this much material to uh, try and vacuum filter like I'm about to do here, really it's worth taking the time to let the flask sit for a while, let the majority of this solid material go to the bottom so that you can just decant uh, the majority of this material here into your vacuum filter setup. That makes it a heck of a lot easier. It saves you a ton of time. So that's, that's one thing that you can do. Uh, to, to help yourself out quite a bit. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna try and keep shaking this here until all the bubbles go away, and then once that's done, then I'm gonna pour off the top layer of the aqueous solution through this frit, followed by the remainder of uh, what is the precipitate at the bottom, and then I'm gonna rinse with uh, DI water. And then we should be able to uh, dry it in the vacuum frit and be done. So there we go. Alright, it has since stopped bubbling, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the vacuum filtration. 
hopefully this goes well. There's no guarantee of anything. We'll see. Why not? should be fairly dry. So let's get that out of there and we'll weigh it up. Okay. And there is the finished product. Still wet, obviously, but uh, you know, more than enough. Pretty good enough for me. Uh, the only thing I have to do now is I need to take a little bit of time here and I have to clean that little guy right there up which will take uh, strong acid. So I'll go ahead and get that done and then I'll worry about cleaning up the uh, end product. Okay, so it was at this point that I noticed things went horribly wrong, somehow. Looking at the extra diffraction patterns, that top is in blue is what the sample is, and what below it in red is what copper carbonate should look like. None of those peaks match up. However, whenever I do search the database for what the best match is, I get this. Now, I've never heard of this compound before but it's a reasonable match it's a sulfate I don't know really what to do with it now so just to affirm that I'm not crazy I did an additional analysis uh, it's an energy dispersive x-ray uh, for an elemental composition and I can see that I've got copper and I've got sulfur and I've got oxygen so I have some kind of sulfate here so with that knowledge I gotta do something with this stuff and why the hell not take a pretty picture? So what I decided to do was to do a little test. So I, if it was a sulfate and it was reasonably similar to copper sulfate, by putting it in an aqueous solution and adding ammonia, it should convert it to copper hydroxide. Or at least that's the idea. So that's what I was trying right here. Uh, I have some cleaning ammonia, I think it's, uh, I, I can't remember the percentage, 10% maybe, and adding it to the solution, it turns into the nice blue complex that you would expect from copper uh, sulfate and ammonia added together. So that at least get, told me something. So what I decided to do was to take the entire batch of material that I had made that has been identified as this sulfate and convert it to copper hydroxide using ammonia. When I did that, I was expecting everything to go into solution as you would expect with ammonia and uh, copper sulfate. But what happened was some of it obviously complex with the ammonia, but another percentage of it actually dropped out of solution. And the precipitate that was formed I didn't know what it was, so I decided I was going to let that settle and separate, and I would keep that separate from the final conversion to copper hydroxide. So here it is after letting settle for a period of time. I've obviously got the precipitate that I need to separate, and then I have the uh, copper and ammonia complex in solution, creating that deep blue color. So the idea was I'll take this, I'll decant the uh, ammonia complex in solution, and then I'll separate the remainder with vacuum filtration. So again, I set up the vacuum filtration, I'll let the sample settle for a while so I can decant the liquid, and then I'll deal with the precipitate that's down on the bottom, separate that, and I'll try and figure out what that is later.
and it's at this point that I'm just going crazy. I'm like, this is supposed to be just a very simple synthesis. I just wanted to get my feet wet, and now it's turned into this whole world. But I gotta push through. So now I've got the ammonia and copper complex after it's been filtered. I've got sodium hydroxide in solution. Add that to the ammonia complex and you get copper hydroxide that precipitates out of solution. And so it appears to do so. So at least something in this universe makes sense. So I now have the precipitate that originally dropped out of solution when I added the sulfate to the ammonia. And I also have what I believe is copper hydroxide that I will vacuum filter and separate. And I'm just going to take them in and analyze them and see what we get. And lo and behold, I actually did make copper hydroxide. So this is what I intentionally made using the ammonia complex and sodium hydroxide. And it's a great match with x-ray diffraction, so I'm, I'm confident that at least that was made properly. In addition to this, I analyzed the precipitate that dropped out of solution when I tried to make the original ammonia complex, and lo and behold, it is also copper hydroxide, which I was not expecting. So I then decide, screw it, put everything together, and then I'm going to go and try and convert the copper hydroxide to copper carbonate. Okay. So here's my setup. I have my copper hydroxide in this flask here. Uh, I have a stir bar in there. It's just the solid and that's because I didn't want to mix. I don't want to deal with any kind of drying out or anything like that. It supposedly, if you have copper hydroxide, it should react with carbon dioxide that's in the air and make copper carbonate. What I'm trying to do is I have sodium carbonate here and then this is some sulfuric acid. So I'm not dealing with a volatile acid. I'm going to drip sulfuric acid into here, which should release CO2. CO2 will drive through this tube here. Through the top of this, I will flush this entire flask. This is capped off here. I'll flush all of this with um, the CO2 from this reaction. And then I'll eventually cap this end with the glass stopper and then seal it with CO2 overnight while mixing. Assuming everything goes well, then I should eventually, over God knows how long, uh, make, actually make copper carbonate. That's the idea. So we'll get it going and see what happens. Okay, I am, I, I think I did. I mean, it's not bright blue anymore. It's kind of a teal uh, green color that you would expect from copper carbonate. And it no longer looks like that. So I'll be damned. I think my cobbled together silly little setup actually worked. So I guess that if I'm correct, the copper hydroxide that was there was absorbing the CO2 that was released from the sodium carbonate that had the sulfuric acid dripping out there, transferred through the tube into here, and should have made copper carbonate. Huh. I guess I'll filter it off and check and see if I actually made what I think I made. And wouldn't you know it, copper carbonate. So now I gotta figure out why the heck didn't I make this in the original reaction? So now I'm going to go back and check the copper sulfate and the sodium carbonate and see what's going on. So I check copper sulfate and bang, matches perfectly. Copper sulfate, pentahydrate. So at least I know that's correct. So the only thing left to check is whether or not I actually have sodium carbonate. So I'll go ahead and do that. And when I do, lo and behold, I get this. And I go and I look at the data sheet and I find out that this is the XRD pattern for sodium percarbonate or sodium carbonate peroxide. Huh. Somebody sold me the wrong stuff. So now, 
you're going to use regular baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, which should give me the same end product, but I won't be dealing with questionable material. So that's the plan. <clears throat> All right, we'll see if the world makes sense now. Here's the bright blue color, teal color I was looking for. Okay. That's what we're talking about here. I did it. I actually made cup of coffee. God, this was supposed to be easy. Anyway, thanks for watching.